Okay, we're on um, we're on camera. Uh, we're on camera. Am I in? <laughs> I, mean, I think is it that better. Yeah. Okay. So okay. So thank you. Um, Cancelling the beliefs. All right. So now I got this from. Um, uh, this phraseology from uh, the teacher, Dr. David R. Hawkins, and so the idea of A Course in Miracles is that we're removing, because someone asked me the question, is it good to visualize on that uh, after you cancel what, the, the aim of The Course in Miracles is to remove all the blocks to love. Mm -hmm. So really, it's a, a book of letting go. You see. Now, here's one of the things you have, one has to understand um, is that <clears throat> my interpretation of what the ego is is that thing which thinks it's in separation and thinks it's got a will uh, in separation to, to God, if you like. So, by having your mental faculties thinking that it's in separation and needing to make choices, it creates what, what's called the experience of, uh, the experience of separation. Mm -hmm. So there is not, the Course in Miracles talks about oneness. So if you're, <clears throat> if you're experiencing yourself as being in separation, i.e. You're, you're thinking you're a thing that's in separation, what creates the sense of separation? The identification with thoughts and the physical body. So. <clears throat> So when there's identification with the thoughts, it, it seems like there's a mind in separation to the universe, and the identification with the body creates a kind of a spatial entity in separation to the universe. So here, some of my favorite lessons from A Course in Miracles are, one of the early lessons in A Course in Miracles is all my thoughts are meaningless. Every single thought in your head, as far as the Course is concerned, is equally meaningless. It has no value and no meaning whatsoever. In fact, the problem that you're not one with God and in oneness right now is, one of the major problems is that the thoughts that cross consciousness, some of them are meaningful. They have pre-existing meaning or value or they have special symbolic importance. Therefore, they create this um, they start to, the more identified you are with certain special thoughts, the more the separation is from the universe and from being in that, the eternal now or the infinite flow. When you have start to have meaningful thoughts and when you start to be identified with thoughts. So all thoughts are meaningless. So, so whatever thought comes in, you can cancel that. To cancel means to completely erase the meaning and the identification, the value that has been attributed to that thought, which is why it's, it is an aspect of the ego which creates this block to being, you, know, you could call it the eternal now, or you know, to be in the oneness, mm -hmm. uh, you know, to be in the stillness of now. So, so you can totally cancel all thoughts. Um, now, I'm an infinite being. Now, uh, the Course of Miracles is, for me, in my interpretation, it's, it's a course you know, for enlightenment. To, to be enlightened from the heaviness and the identification with thoughts and the physical body. So, um, another lesson, one of the fundamental lessons from A Course in Miracles is I'm not a body, I'm free, for I'm as God created me. So that, that lesson is hammered quite a lot because the, the interest, the identification with the body and the interest and the identification with the thoughts, along with the repressed feelings, is the, the main uh, the main factor in why what, what one has an ego and doesn't feel spiritual and goes into these very dark states of fear, separation, all the negative feelings, guilt, shame, uh, anxiety, uh, lack of faith. So, when, now, if, if you've, everyone, I, no, everyone, I guess most people have had, had very good spiritual experiences. You may not have realized you've had a spiritual experience, but you have. It's like being in the timeless presence where you lose your identification with the body and your thoughts, and there's a stillness and a oneness with the universe. And the whole, it's like the whole, uh, everything is illuminated and it is ecstatically beautiful. And it's because there's no ego, there's no tracking of time, there's no thoughts, there's no identification with the body, there's oneness and peace 
and presence. You know, it's the holy presence. So that is when there's no, and it's an infinite. When you're in those states, there's no experience of limitation. So it's infinite. It's timeless. It's bodiless. It's mm -hmm. thoughtless. And it's, it's like with that filter of the ego taken out, i.e. those identifications, those negative thoughts, the body uh, and the repressed feelings are not in the way in that moment. It's divine and it's the, the highest state. So, so, so it is, if you like, a correlation to say I cancel my belief in uh, poverty, let's say. I cancel my belief in poverty. Uh, so you cancel it. It's not real. Uh, I'm an infinite being. So someone was mentioning about the non the non-dual states. Because if you let go of the ego, what the course goes, we go into, into states of oneness. Now, what does oneness mean? It means the idea that any experience of a separation in this room disappears. So, what does that mean? Like, when I started to do the spiritual work, the observer, counseling of beliefs, when I go, you know, I've had many mystical experiences. So I know that when I'm not attached to my thoughts and my body, I have an infinite experience, a oneness experience, a limitless experience, a timeless experience. I'm getting a few nods here, so I guess a few people have, are, are knowing they've had that limitless, timeless presence experience. I've got a few nods. So, so, so that's the truth. That, when I'm in the infinite, when I'm in the limitless, presence of now, that is the truth. So I am, my essence is infinite. That's the truth. So when I'm in my limitation, that's a lie. That's a falsehood. You know, like, I'm, I'm in poverty, or I can't do this, or, you know, I'm ill, or I haven't got, you know, or the universe won't provide me with a boyfriend, or I won't be able to get a career, or I won't be able to earn enough money, or, um, <clears throat> or, or whatever it is. Those, are, those need to be cancelled and taken out. So you just can't, you say cancel them. Other ways to do it is God did, not create, um, God did not create poverty, so it's not real. You could do it that way, that, which is the Course in Miracles way, or I cancel my belief. Now, um, so... Also, even if your, your ego may have resistance, or, may, or your ego may find the words being used as being... See, he, he knows what I'm talking about. So, the ego may know... The ego... The ego may... The ego may... Yeah, he's listening. So, the ego... The ego... Is, that, you see, babies are in the infinite. You see, yes. they haven't got an ego. Absolutely. They're not. Think, they're not thinking. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They haven't got a head like, uh, where am I going to get my next paycheck? Or, <laughs> or is the universe going to provide me with a mate? Or, or anything like that. <laughs> see, <laughs> so they're they're in the infinite. Um, and when they're in the infinite, the universe provides everything. But when they start thinking, they go into fear and, and, and disconnection mm. in, in the he present agrees moment. With you. Pun? He agrees with you. Yes. He agrees with you. Nice. You see, because so you know, so he can be a clear channel for God. You see, mm. but um, so that's the thing. So that's the infinite. So you can cancel. You can cancel. Now another thing with cancelling your beliefs, so God did not create it. If you have blocks, you may have blocks like, I'm not. You know. I'm, Cancelling beliefs doesn't work for me, it's never going to work for me, or I just don't connect with that. But you can also cancel that, you see. I cancel my belief that cancelling beliefs won't work for me. I'm an infinite being subject only to what I hold in mind. Or I cancel my belief that I feel no connection to this. So you can cancel out your blocks to why it's not, not working. Other things are um, with cancelling beliefs, uh, and generally the ego is impatient. Uh, the ego is very impatient, so it's a bit like um, if you know if I'm going to cancel, I've, I've done one cancelling, you know I haven't you know I haven't got enough money in my bank. I cancel for one one second, and the money hasn't come in straight away, so it doesn't work. So I'm going to give up. You know I'm going to find something else. Often spiritual people will like, uh, but the thing is, I'm sort of sharing my experience. I've had three illnesses leave. I've, I've heard many other people who've cancelled. 
and had a normal. So it does work. Um, and sometimes it's just getting, just intuitively getting to the connection that, uh, that you trust the person who's sharing it with you. So, um, so it does work on that level. We are on camera, but does anyone want to ask a question on camera? Um, I'm just yep. wondering, you talk about timeless, egoless state. Yes. How do you get into that state? Well, one of the tools, like I, I, I do several things in this group. One is the Course in Miracles, Cancelling Your Beliefs. We'll be going later on into Feel the Feelings, which is how to release the repressed uh, and suppressed energies which are held within the ego. And the other one is the Observer, so, uh, which is uh, self-inquiry. So we'll be doing that later in the group. So by being in the witnesser of thoughts and feelings, uh, which we'll be going down later, you release the attachment to being in those thoughts and the feelings of the ego states. So you, you jump to a limitless state. Does that answer the question? Yeah. Yeah, so, but you have to keep doing those things because the ego, you can have a lot of repressed feelings and these thoughts can be held on. If you just keep cancelling something, also, the more you cancel, you'll start to get things like intuition will start to guide your cancellings. Also, sometimes, uh, I was going to share this today with cancelling of beliefs, which is that eventually, if you tune in uh, and you just give s several variants, you're, you, you'll get some kind of unconscious cue. You know, should I say I cancel my, should I say I cancel my belief I'm not good enough? I'm an infinite being subject only do I hold in mind, or should I cancel my belief I haven't got enough confidence? And then you'll suddenly get an intuition, no, I should be doing, I cancel my belief I haven't got enough confidence, rather than I'm not good enough. Uh, a lot of this stuff is how you hold it in mind is how you should cancel it. Often your own languaging will be um, a guide to how you should cancel it. Another thing to do is when I say I'm an infinite being, I, I let go of, the, of the, the negative belief and I just see everything, either I see everything and I go back to an experience of just being the timeless now or I've had a white light experience or you can just erase it in white light because the ego doesn't hold on to it. So what we're doing is we're letting go of everything that the ego is holding on to, if that makes sense. So you can be a channel. It's like if there's a source of infinite wisdom in the universe, and infinite, we say that the universe is omniscient, omnipresent, and omnipotent, i.e. your ego is the block to accessing infinite information, you know, a source of information which is beyond the ego and all your conditioning and all your beliefs. It's also a source of infinite power. You can do things with inexhaustible energy. It's a, it's a, it's a place of channeling wisdom that doesn't come from your ego. Mm -hmm. So when we're doing, when we're cancelling, what we're doing with enlightenment work is taking out everything of the ego so that we can connect to that infinite source of wisdom, of energy, of power, of life, to be, to tap into the, the infinite or the limitless. So, you know, I was asked this question about what, do we visualize something or do we cancel and say, and then put something in its place? I mean, I'm quite, you know, you can do that. But I'd say there's different levels of consciousness. Often, you know, I like, um, and I sometimes do visualize like a healthy body or whatever, but generally, with enlightenment work, I'm trying to let go of everything to be a clear, to be a clear channel. Because as you let go of things, the eagles say, I know what's good for me. And we want to visualize it. So when you get to let go of some baggage, the ego will say, well, I want to visualize this because I know this is going to be best for me. But I think, and that's, there's nothing, I don't have any views on whether you should or shouldn't do that, but that will be coming from your ego. It will be coming from a certain level of clearing, and now your ego wants this to be the solution. But if you don't do that, and you just clear that and keep clearing, then your ideas will go to a higher vibration. I don't know if that makes mm. sense. Mm. And if you clear everything, <coughs> rather than keep saying, I want this, the ego goes, I want this, after you've cleared a bit. If you've cleared everything, then you, you'll be like an empty source for the inspiration of the universe, if that makes sense. You'll be a clear channel. So I don't think there's anything wrong. I mean, this is a lot of the thing with, um, with the, um, the law of attraction stuff. Um, and um, I don't, you know, I, th I think the law of, law of 
a lot of attraction stuff is good. But I would say, if you understand levels of consciousness, you know, your, your capacity to tune into the divine depends on how much of ego you've cleared out. So if I like, like if I was heavily in my ego, and I did a little bit of spiritual work, my ego would say, I want a red Ferrari, you know? Because I've just, I'm just on my early days of spiritual work, and it will think that if I got a red Ferrari, then that would be the solution. But if I do a bit more spiritual work, it might be something different. Or if I do a bit more spiritual work, it might be something different, you see. Like, um, uh, like can I give some examples? Um, yes. So, you know, like when I was heavily in my ego, I thought a career in the stock market would be the right job for me. And the type of women I was attracted with, you know, were what my ego thought would be the right type of woman. And the, and the career in the stock market would be the right career. But that led me to kidney failure and a near-death spiritual experience, which started me on my spiritual journey at the age of 30. Because I knew that when I was making choices from my ego with uh, the opposite sex and with career, it was leading to death. So those were, those were bad choices, you know. So as I started to do the spiritual work, the more you do the spiritual work, what you choose becomes different. And the more you do the spiritual work, the more you find that peace and that love on the inside, the more your choices will be those which will give you peace and love in the long term. Mm -hmm. The thing with the ego is if you're, the more you're an ego, whatever you get will only give you short-term relief. You know, so like when I was in, when I was, I'm a member of 12-step fellowships, which are for addiction. So like if, you know, like I'm in, you know, I, I, I had a food addiction. So, I, you know, I would get temporary relief from donuts. But it wouldn't be, it's not, it, you know, that's an ego choice to get temporary relief. But it doesn't give you long-term peace and happiness. Or the type of interactions as I'm having with women were not giving me long-term peace. They were, you know, they're giving short-term, short-term relief, but long-term pain. Mm -hmm. So, so as you do the spiritual work, you, your spirit start to choose things rather than your ego, if that makes sense. And usually, it's quite funny. When I was in my, the more I'm in ego, the choices I make are direct reflection, and the choices I get are not spiritually enjoyable. And the more I do the spiritual work, the more I choose choices which are spiritually compatible. So this goes with work and with romantic relationships and everything. So often it's good to... Uh, another thing I would say... Anyway, I'm, I'm digressing, but yeah, so, so... What was the question again? How do you get into the state of... Uh, of the infinite? Yeah. yeah. So did, did, I, did I answer yeah, that? Yeah, yeah. Okay. So, and I answered the question as well about visualization. Sorry, about yeah. about. Oh, uh, and were there any? Well, we are recording, but was there any other questions? Or recording? No. But if there was a question. Yeah. So. All right. So, any other questions? So, I. <clears throat> one other thing with cancelling your beliefs. Um, it's like um, I've had, you know, I've had three major illnesses go, and one of the things to know um, is that the ego thinks in terms of causality, i.e., the ego thinks that if I can think of a solution out there of how the world works by being clever, you know, like uh, I come from a like I have a degree in, uh, degree in biochemistry and an MBA and it's like the ego thinks in terms of if I'm clever enough I know how the world works and that will give me what I want yeah but actually if you if you've had spiritual experiences you realize that what powers the world is in fact um, the light of the universe it's not your thinking so the more you let go of your thinking the more that is the, that is the thing. You see, if you let go of your thinking, that will actually cure cancer. That will actually cure gout and asthma. That will actually, you know, so that, I mean, I'm just showing my experience. I'm not trying to make a medical claim. But that, that's my experience. All these major illnesses. I'll, I'll quickly share something. To, so, so I had a kidney transplant. After a kidney <coughs> transplant, mm, they get, I had 
13 medication, <coughs> 13 medication, which is normal for a kidney trial. And all I did was I just said, I cancel my belief. This is how powerful, this is just a demonstration of the power of cancer beliefs. I cancel my belief in the adverse side effects of medication. I.e., <coughs> I didn't cancel the good effects, I just cancelled that they had any bad effects. So, and I took the medication, and within under three years, I was down to one medication, and the consultant at the hospital, the Royal Free, said to me, uh, he doesn't know of any other transplant patient who's taking less medication. So it's just like when you just cancel this stuff and you go to grace, that is the biggest healer of all. I don't know if that makes sense. You know, it can take illnesses out. The, the head doesn't understand it. Uh, you know, if you let go of your fears around things, money can come in, miracles can happen, relationships can happen, but everything, is, everything that you bring to you will come to you, if you're in a lot of ego, what will come to you will be from ego, if that makes sense. You'll attract things from ego. Mm. Like if I say, I want a relationship, and I'm in a lot of ego, you'll get a relationship. But the relationship will teach you a lot of lessons, because everything is orchestrated from the ego, if that makes sense. And once you're at, pe at peace, and you have that sense of love and light on the inside, when you make it, well, you, you're already in love, Here's the thing, when you're connected to the infinite, whenever you get something, it's not going to make you more happy. You know, here's the, that's the, one of the funny things with enlightened teachers. See, all enlightened teachers say, there's nothing I need or want from the universe. They all say the same thing, every enlightened teacher. Because once you get that peace and love on the inside, once you're connected to the infinite source, there isn't anything you desire or want. There's no craving. No cravings exist in that. So, but also, automatically, you're aligned with that which is in direct correlation to that vibration, you see. Once you're in the lower vibrations, um, I mean, I think a lot of spiritual teaching, of course, miracles, you know, I sort of see the whole world will, if you choose from your ego, there will always be a lesson. <laughs> anyway, I probably shouldn't go into that too much, but I think everyone knows what I'm talking about. So. I think that's enough. For, is that enough on cancelling beliefs? Shall we get into it? Or is there any other questions? So when I, sa I said that because when I cancel something, I 100% want to cancel it. I have zero doubt in my ego. Nothing my ego holds on to is of any use whatsoever. That's why I shared it. I like I'm cancelling with 100% conviction. Because I know that when I'm connected to the infinite source, of the, you know, when I'm in the eternal now, that the universe can give me far more than holding on to my ego crap. So I'm like 100%. I don't hold on to science, I don't hold on to fear-based beliefs, I don't hold on to monetary ideas or, or, or anything. It's like, whatever, I can, if I can let go of it. So we're, we're doing a course of miracles. You know, you've got to let go of your fear and your limiting beliefs to allow the miracles in. You know, if you want the mega miracles to come in, then you have to let go of 100% of everything. Yeah. If you hold on any belief, like from the ego, miracles will still happen, but they won't be so big and they'll take longer. Mm -hmm. You know, and um, that's, not, no, that's not a new teaching. I mean, that's kind of biblical. And it's everywhere. It's also in the Indian, in, in India, they talk about the cities. They've known for thousands of years these mystical phenomena spontaneous healings, being in two places at once. All of the, they've known for thousands of years that once you connect to spirit, what can happen is astronomical because you're beyond, you're beyond time. You're connected to the infinite power that, that, that powers the whole universe. So, so it's safe to let go of the, lim the limiting ideas of what the ego thinks, you see. Can I ask you something? Like yes, that? please do. Do you think that you could and be a hundred percent convicted if you ha hadn't had that previous experience of feeling completely um, I don't know how to describe it, you know what you said like um, I've, had, I've, had, yeah, I've had white light spirituals, I've yeah, had exactly. mystical experience. Do you feel like um, if you hadn't had that, would you, you well you can't, it's mean it's half that, or you can't uh, That's you, true, you but, all that, um, I'm kind of thinking, what well, if you don't have that experience, is it kind of a chicken and egg problem, you know? It is, isn't it, yeah, no, you're, you're looking at it from the level of the ego. Mm. You, see, you see, 
there's something called you have to like it's a good question because you're, you're analyzing it look I've just shared I've just uh, it's a good question I've just shared something and I should have said this at the beginning of the group you know you should if you can when I'm talking or anyone's talking if you disengage from your ego you'll tune into your intuition right and it's something you may not be able to do but when you listen with your intuition you'll know if someone's telling you the truth or if they're lying you know, and often they, you know, usually men are generally have a slightly, in general, have a more of a handicap. But you've all heard of sixth sense, female intuition, gut feeling. So even though I've sh if you listen to me with your head, you're, you know, it's just me saying something to your head. No, no, it's it's not. I I don't know if you understand me correctly because okay. I think I'm more. My question more comes from my own. Um, I was thinking. What if I have never had that experience of being fully connected to, you know, that, that, that yes. we were saying earlier, and you were saying, oh, people are nodding, this, you know, you've had that experience where um, yes. you kind of, your thoughts are away and you're completely connected to the infinite. That's right. I was thinking, if I don't have had that experience, does this maybe not work well? For me, well, you know, I, we know I, what I mean. Does yeah, it? Do I? Do I have a limitation? Do I maybe not? Am I not able to become hundred percent committed, and then it doesn't work as good as it would because I haven't had that experience? And if so, is there like a chicken and egg problem here where I, in order to get that? You know what I mean? Yes. Um, That's where my question nice. came from. Yeah. Thank you. Um, yes. So you, I mean, you can get my, you can get, you can, you can connect to my intuition to know whether I'm telling the truth. You just cancel those beliefs. You will get it. I think I have a head start, but it doesn't mean that you can't cancel your doubts. Does that make sense? You can't cancel your. I cancel. I cancel my belief that because I haven't had a white light spiritual experience is going to be more difficult. Yeah, exactly, yeah. I'm an infinite being subject unto what I hold in mind. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And also if you come to these type of groups regularly, um, you'll hear other people who've had like really big experiences with mm -hmm. it. And that will break your, your doubt. Mm -hmm. Like we had someone else share that it worked for them. Oh, I fully believe these. I know people that have and yes. I, fully, I fully believe in it. Yes. I just, uh, I think I have an ego fear, maybe that I lack the experience. So, so you, <coughs> yeah, you, yeah. you just, you just, um, you, you cancel, you cancel your belief that you're special and you can never get it. You see, mm -hmm. you, you, you see, other people can get it, but you can never get it because yeah. you're not good enough. You know, you can't, you can't, yeah. you can't, you can't cancel that. Yeah. It's, it's, a, it's a normal one that most people have the thing of like, other people can get it, but I can never get it. You know. Yeah. Because I'm the one person it will never <coughs> it will never work for because there's something so badly wrong with me that, <coughs> that I, I can't get it. That's quite normal. Mm. But um, but then I would just cancel that idea. Mm. So the one thing to realize, okay, is that everyone's ego everyone's ego is not special to anyone other, other one's another person's ego. I mean, there's different levels of ego inflation. Like some people have more belief systems and negativity than others. But to clear it is exactly the same process as for anyone else. There is no such thing as a special ego. You see, if you cleared away all your negative thoughts and took out all your oppressed feelings, that you're no different to anyone else. So it's not like there is a special ego on the planet which cannot do spiritual work because it's beyond redemption, and, you know. And you happen to be that one ego on the whole planet that won't you can't clear it, but if that makes sense. Right. So you, you know, you're not that special. <laughs> yeah. Um, 